All right, John Yard here. I've got a steel farm boss chainsaw with me and we're gonna be looking at the different parts of a chainsaw. So I was doing some basic Google research and I was really surprised at how difficult it was to find basic information about a chainsaw. And, and sure, that's stuff that you can find if you still have the user's manual for your chainsaw. You can often find that in there. But frankly, a lot of people don't like re reading user's manuals. So we're gonna go through as much of it as we can today. And we're basically gonna be breaking it out into three groups of parts for a chainsaw. First, it's the OSHA required components that all chainsaws have to have. Then it's some of the more mechanical things that you're gonna use more frequently. And then last, I'm gonna show you some of the engine parts. So we're gonna zoom into the chainsaw here so that you can see what I'm doing. So the first thing with the OSHA stuff is the anti-vibration handle. So that's this handle. And one of the ways you can tell that it's anti-vibration is if I take the, the top plate off here, you can tell that there's a little spring and if I look all the way on the bottom of the chainsaw, there's another spring down here that you can see. And so that's all part of the, the handle system that reduces the vibration for the user. And that's really important because using a chainsaw, that can cause a lot of fatigue on your arms and your hands. And so having that in place is just a, a huge uh, and important piece of a chainsaw. And then the next thing here is right here. And this is called the, the hand guard. And so it's basically, if you've got your, your hand on the handle, you're using your chainsaw, it's protecting your hand from slipping forward and hitting the chain. But this is also the chain break of the chainsaw. And so if, you, if the chainsaw kicks back or something happens, you can hear that click of the chainsaw. And that means that it's engaged the chain break. When the chain break is engaged, basically what's that, what that's doing is it's engaging the clutch which the clutch is grabbing the sprocket, which I'll show you on the inside of this chainsaw. So I'll take off the face plate. And so the thing that drives the chain around the chainsaw is called the sprocket. And when I engage my clutch with the handbrake, there's a ring on the inside of this that grabs the sprocket clutch, thus the name. It's clutching the sprocket, which stops the chain from turning. So it's kind of like an instant break. And this can look different on different models of chainsaw. I'm gonna pull in an echo chainsaw here. And this is done a little bit differently, but it's the same, uh, the same function. So here with this type of chainsaw, you have the sprocket on the inside and then the clutch and the ring that, that grabs the sprocket is uh, on the outside. So when I activate that, that handbrake on this type of chainsaw, the ring that's, that's stopping the chain from turning is actually on the face plate instead of embedded inside the chainsaw. So going back to my, my steel chainsaw here, the next thing for us to look at is on the front of the chainsaw. This is the next OSHA required component and this is the, the muffler. So this metal piece here, this is the muffler. And on the inside of this is also what's called the spark arrester. And so the muffler is just reducing the noise produced by the engine and the spark arrester is grabbing any small pieces of metal or anything uh, that might otherwise jump out of the chainsaw and, and hurt somebody or catch something on fire potentially. So that's what that's for. Then tipping up the chainsaw, you can see this small metal piece and this is called the chain catcher and its purpose is exactly that. Um, so if you're, you're running your chainsaw and for whatever reason a, a link breaks or something happens and uh, the chainsaw jumps off if it's broken, it can actually wrap all the way around and hit you in the hands. And so the purpose of this chain catcher is to stop the chain from wrapping around and hitting you in the hands, catching the chain. And then the last uh, couple things that OSHA requires on all chainsaws are back here. So this is the, the, the trigger, right? This is called the, the throttle trigger. And then on top is the throttle interlock. And these have to be used together to operate a chainsaw. You have to put your hand on the throttle interlock in order to be able to activate the throttle. And then of course the throttle is, is basically the gas pedal of the chainsaw, which puts, uh, puts fuel in the engine and allows the, the chainsaw to run. So those are all the OSHA required uh, components of a chainsaw. So next what we're gonna look at are some of the more basic things, uh, the mechanical components that uh, you're probably gonna use most frequently when operating a chainsaw. And so what we've already taken off here, this is the bar and the chain of the chainsaw. This is what most people think of as the blade, but it's really two separate components. And then the thing that, that drives this, we already saw this a little bit earlier, is the sprocket. That's what drives the chain forward around uh, the bar, allowing it to cut, right? 
On the front of the chainsaw, you can see here these spikes. These are the bumper spikes of the chainsaw, and this is really useful for a few different things, but uh, if you're cutting firewood, for example, you can lodge that into the log and then allow the chainsaw, uh, as, it, as it turns around the bar, to just pull the chain into, into the wood. And it also prevents the, the, the chainsaw from jostling around too much while you're operating it. Um, so also here, uh, moving, moving around, you can see the, the inputs for the gas, the, the gas and, and oil mixture, so the fuel for the chainsaw. And then over here you have the, the lubricant, which is the bar and chain oil, which reduces the friction of the, of the chain going around the bar. And so those are the two different inputs there. And then here you have the pull cord, and the pull cord is connected to the flywheel. So this is getting a little bit into the, the engine, sort of the engine's inner workings. Uh, but the flywheel is basically what smooths out the firing of the pistons in the engine uh, because if you, you didn't have that flywheel in there, it'd just kind of be jumping up and down all day long. And it also helps with, with starting the engine initially. All right, and then we're gonna move into some of more of the, the, the engine components here. And as, as we do that, I'm gonna turn the chainsaw back around so that you can see the side. So this big round piece that you see this is the, the air filter for the engine. So that uh, contributes to the, the air and uh, uh, fuel mixture. So if it gets too clogged up, there won't be enough air getting into the fuel and mixing as, as the engine is firing. So this is something that you might have to clean or replace over time. And then also we have up top here, this is the spark plug, which is uh, helping to ignite the fuel in the engine. I have another spark plug here just so that you can see an example of what this looks like outside of the engine. So this is the, the spark plug. Also here, uh, chainsaws, all chainsaws have some adjustments uh, on, on the side here. This one is manual, but larger and more expensive saws sometimes have an automated device that does this. But for a manual tool like this, there's what is called the high-low adjustment screw and the lean adjustment screw. And you can see this on the outside panel of the chainsaw, which I'll, I'll bring back here just so you can see it. So H is for high, L is for low, and then LA is for lean. And basically what these are doing is high-low adjusts the, the maximum RPM of the chainsaw, and, and low adjusts the minimum RPM of the chainsaw. And this basically helps you to control the idling speed. So you want the idling speed for your chainsaw to be at a place where the engine still runs when you're not using the chainsaw, when you're not using the, the, the chain itself, but it's not, uh, so far in the other direction that the chain actually spins even when it's idling. So that helps you control that sweet spot. And then the lean is controlling the air and fuel mixture. So if, if you need to adjust that, uh, it, it's, it's basically uh, something that controls the, the input of the fuel into the carburetor. And for any of these, the high-low or the lean, this is all something that if you want to learn how to adjust, exactly adjust it, that the user manual that came with your chainsaw should have really clear instructions for how to do that. So I won't go into any, any more detail on what those are doing there. Uh, another thing I need to mention while we're here is this lever. This, is a, this lever is something that you're gonna use uh, every time you use a chainsaw, and it'll be more clear when I put the, the face panel back on a little bit. This is basically the, the on-off switch, and uh, also serves as uh, the uh, choke for, for a chainsaw. So you can use this to help start your chainsaw, and it's also the, the on-off switch. So that's what that piece does there. Next we're gonna show the summer winter shutter. You might be able to see this little orange piece in here. That is the summer winter shutter. And I'm gonna grab a scrunch tool to help pull this out show you what it looks like. So for this chainsaw, it looks like this, this small orange panel. You might be able to see it a little bit there. And the idea of the shutter is that it's regulating the temperature of the chainsaw seasonally. So in the summertime, what you want is you want to actually close this passageway. There's a small passageway uh, between here and, and the engine. And in the summertime, you actually want that to be closed off because you want the chainsaw to be pulling air in from the outside surroundings because the air is cooler. But in the winter time, you actually need to take out this shutter, flip it around so that the open piece 
is allowing the passage between the engine and the rest of the chainsaw to be open so that it is actually pulling warm air from the engine to keep the rest of the components uh, warm. So if you're having issues with your chainsaw, uh, especially in the winter, then you should check your, your uh, summer winter shutter to make sure it's in the correct position. Another important thing to note is that this uh, varies quite a bit what the summer winter shutter looks like and so in different types of chainsaw this can be very very different. So let me actually pull in uh, a different chainsaw here so that you can see it a little bit. On, on this steel the summer winter shutter is actually just a, a panel that's like right on the engine and it's, it has the same idea though. The, the, the part that allows air to flow out of the engine is the winter setting and the reverse of that is the summer setting. So that's how it works for this chainsaw. And let me just show you one more example just for, just for fun here. This is from the Echo chainsaw we saw earlier. It just has this tiny little rubber piece. It's not even labeled, but that is the summer winter shutter for the Echo chainsaw. One other thing I'm gonna point out to you on this chainsaw is this is, this is the engine in here. This might go without saying, but this is the engine and these, uh, the, the outer casing of this is basically set up to uh, be a little bit of a heat sink and let some of the, the, the heat emanate away from the chainsaw to keep it from overheating. Uh, so that's everything I wanted to show here, but there are two other components that are sometimes found on chainsaws, but not on every model. And for those, I'm gonna pull in a couple other Chainsaw. So this is a, a larger model of chainsaw, and with larger models, sometimes they'll have what's called a, a decompression valve. And that's this little knob right here. And the purpose of a decompression valve is to essentially just make the engine easier to start. And it's releasing the pressure that's inside uh, the piston before you, you try to use your pull cord to, to ignite the engine and start it turning. The other thing I wanna point out is uh, this chainsaw has one. This is a manual fuel pump. So you might recognize this if you've seen uh, like a lawn mower or a weed eater or something like that. It has one of these little bulbs. And essentially what this does is it basically just gives, it makes the engine easier to start because it's giving the fuel a head start on its way into the piston and the engine. And so when you use this, it's just giving you a, a little bit of an easier time starting up your chainsaw. So that's really it. Those are all of the main parts of a chainsaw that we've walked through. Uh, yeah, so I hope this has been helpful to you and I hope that uh, you'll find maybe some of the other videos on our channel uh, useful as well. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.